I am the man, the only man in the world, that makes the replacement timing belt for the Singer 95-1. And here it is sneaking in for a quick look right there. And since you have purchased uh, a belt from me, I have made this video, or I am going to make this video, to show you how to install it in the machine. And if you have looked at other videos on YouTube, once this one gets finished, uh, edited, uploaded, uh, and live on YouTube, I will be deleting all of the other videos that I made. And the reason I'm starting out here is because this is really the first thing I want you to do before you go and attempt to put the belt inside the machine in the, um, the arm support, which is where your uh, ID plate is, where the stitch controller is, and so on. It's the piece that comes up from the base on, uh, and holds up the arm that comes across to where we are now. So, I have gone ahead and removed the feed dog right here. I'm going to use this scissor as a pointer. The feed dog and the needle plate. And I did this for a couple of reasons. One, I wanted you to be able to identify the screws uh, that go back in with them because you're going to move them over into a container and they may roll away and get away from the part. But this is a standard with uh, seam with measurements um, needle plate for Singer 95-1. Here are its two screws. They have countersunk slot heads. The feed dog that goes with this needle plate, because there were combinations of them, many, um, have two uh, what are called shoulder screws that are slotted on top, and they go into here blocking the shot. They go into here and as this moves back and forth, okay, I'm going to put the hand wheel back on so I can make it move. That's the feed dog holder that runs with the machine. And since I just slipped that hand wheel back on there, it won't come off easy, so I'm leaving it on there right now. Now, down in here, where the hook is, and there's no belt on this machine, so this isn't going to turn, there are three screws, and you can actually see them coming around half, half the top of them, and I'm going to point at this one right here, so you can see what I'm talking about, this one right here. It's going to disappear as I do this, and the next one will come up. There are three of them. Let me move the camera just a hair so you can see them better. There we go. Alright, so as the hook turns, there are the three screws that hold it onto the lower shaft, and that you are going to be loosening these screws later and retiming the machine after you get the belt back on the upper and the lower sprocket gears. And just to point it out, this is the sewing hook right there. The tip of this uh, part in the sewing hook is what grabs the thread as the needle comes down to get it. And since now you can see the machine will run up and down but the hook doesn't move, okay, but the feed dog is moving, we are going to have to get that hook back to where it is slipping right through the scarf and the needle, the cutout and the needle, and this tip will catch the thread. So now that you can see these two screws with the feed dog, when you take them out, when you get these loose and get them out of the machine, okay, try to go so slow that they just release I'm going to use, use my both fingers and get your fingers under there and try to move it and set it down so that the screws stay in the feed dog. Much easier also when you go to place it back in, right, you're going to hold it like that, get it over and position it, 
and do your very best to keep that screw in place. I'm going to take away this hand so I won't block the shot. To keep it in place so that you can tighten it down and get it started. This is very, very soft metal. So do not force it. Make sure that you are catching the threads just right when you go to put it in. And you're going to see this again when I actually go to, to retime the hook, once I start to put the machine back together again. But later on, once the belt is back in the machine, then you're going to see this is spinning around. You're going to see the hook spinning around with the needle running up and down it without these two parts in place just to show you what cor correct timing looks like before the machine is completely uh, reassembled. So I'm going to kill the shot right now and reset it um, uh, for our next phase in this video. So hang on, we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Now, may have started with clean hands, but this is where you're going to start to get really dirty. Um, this is a, a shot to show you the inspection plate, hand wheel, the end screw, the two set screws. Where's my pointer? I'll use a different pointer. Here's a tweezer. I'll use it for a different pointer. Here is the end of the hand wheel screw. There's, this is two set screws. And there are slots in the main uh, shaft going out all the way through the machine and these two guys engage it. This is the inspection plate. It has a very small screw, uh, smaller than the one that ordinarily would be there, but Singer's uh, threads are proprietary and sometimes screws from other machines and parts will run right into them. You can't go to a hardware store and buy screws for a Singer sewing machine. The threads will never match. Okay, Just a word, word to the wise. Okay. And while we're on the subject, no, never mind, skip that, we'll show you that later. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to want you to do, okay, and my hands are going to go in and out of the shot, but pay attention, and also, something else, everything I'm doing is in the document that came with um, the belt. So, this video mirrors everything that's in the belt. So here's the inspection plate. I took it off and I put it in the container with all the parts. Now I'm going to come back in here with the camera and tighten up. But just to let you know that when that inspection cover comes off, you'll be able to peek around inside here, right in there, and you'll see the upper sprocket uh, with its pins on it. Um, not going to show you that because it's not necessary. There will be a shot for that later, so there's no point in doubling up. So let's move over here a little bit, and I'm going to tighten up on this just a hair. Okay. Okay, just like that. Just to give you a better shot at what I'm doing. Okay. Now, here we go again. All right, I'm coming around. Okay. And first thing we're going to do is okay, undo this screw. Hold on to the hand wheel and take out this screw. This is a squeezer. Okay, it's not just there for looks. When you have the hand wheel off and then you go to put it back on, you're going to tap it on so that the end of the main shaft is slightly re uh, recessed. And you're going to snug this up here, but not too tight. I want you to remember that when you turn the hand wheel before you take it off, how nice and loose it feels. Okay, you can see the take-up lever jumping up and down in the front of the machine. If you tighten this too much, it will not be able to turn as easily as it is right now. So, I'll bring that point up later. Okay, now, here are the two set screws for the hand wheel itself. And I am backing them out just enough to take the tension off of them. Do not remove them. They're about three-eighths of an inch long. 
um, but think of them as being a quarter of an inch long and just enough to loosen them up. Now, this machine is from, just to give you an idea, this machine is from 1923, August 27th, 1923. She is one of 1,000 machines that left the factory. And the serial number plate um, is down at the base, of, uh, next to the base of the arm support, the arm support. And um, if you want to find out how old your machine is, um, give me your serial number and um, I will look it up for you. Now, the hand wheel set screws are back out. And you are going to need some type of a hammer, a small hammer like this one, little ball, miniature ball peen hammer. And you're going to start tapping it away uh, hold on to it so I'm clang. But right now it's already slipping backwards and I'm turning it as I'm tapping it. Okay, and it's starting to come free. Okay. Okay. By the way, I I oiled all of this. I sprayed um, WD-40 and you can buy it in little cans just like this one right there and spray it all over the place and it will serve you well. Okay, so the hand wheel is starting to come loose, but it will not come off but as well. Come to think of it, it's doing it for me. So there she goes, all right? Now, some of you will have a much older machine than this 1927 machine, because this machine, dates, date, or 1923 machine, excuse me, these machines date back to um, the very early 1900s, 1912, 13, 1914. So um, be very careful if you have a spoke tan wheel. If you have one of these, you don't have to be quite so gentle because this is all aluminum spun, but it is a Singer part. Now, this is the end of the main shaft. When this turns, everything up front turns. This is the main shaft bushing, but before we can take that out, we have to take out this oil delivery piece, which looks like a sliding pond. So undo this big headed screw. This is very thin spring steel, like that. Okay, and you can see it has a sliding pond kind of a look. So put it in there along with its screw, and now we have the trickiest part of all to get out of here, all right? And this is where you're going to have to be extremely careful. If you break this part, um, you are, you know what. Okay, now, I've had this out of here once, so I'm showing it to you again. This is the set screw for a long groove that is on this bushing on the side, all right? This has a positioning to it and it is not threaded into the machine, which is very important to know. So what I want you to do is to loosen this up with your WD-40 or liquid wrench, back this set screw out, do not remove it, okay? And if you don't do that and you start fighting with this, you will break, you could break this part, snap it right in half. So make sure that you undo the set screw here. Now, here we go with a piece of leather, okay, which I put on here, and here is a, a grip pliers. You could also use a um, vice grip, but be careful. Just be very gentle with all of this, and get a hold of it, and start rocking it back and forth, okay? You will know when you have loosened it. Okay, you will feel it slip, okay, and it may take a lot of tries and a lot of turns because it's beveled, okay, and if this, if there's, if you've got too much oil on it and it's slipping, then give it a shot and just grab onto the metal and give it a twist. There she goes, started to turn. I'm not loosening my grip and I am doing very, very, very short little turns. Okay, some of your very older machines are going to fight like hell. 
So I want you to be very, very careful about getting this bushing out of here. Okay. Now, when you get it, and it's okay if you chew this area up here, this little, this ridge up here, it's okay if you chew that up a little bit. When you get it to the point where you have got it coming out, okay, and you can get the to the flat part of it and not the beveled part, okay, right in there, okay, then readjust your grip pliers. Okay, and start turning and pulling on it. Turning, pulling, turning, pulling, turning, pulling. Same thing. It doesn't matter okay, if you put some marks on it or if you want to, you can do this and you may feel better about it and so will I actually. Okay. Okay. Because now it's loose enough to do this. And there will come a point where you'll be able to wiggle it with your hand and out she comes. Now I want to explain some things about this bushing right here. Now you are seeing the end of the main shaft with these two grooves in it. And here is the hand wheel. And I'm going to line up an area right there and push it on. and turn it over just a hair. Let me go back this way. Okay. There are the two slots. Right there. One, two. And this bushing, when it's all the way in here, when it's seated properly, this part of the flange right here is right up against the back of the case of the machine and here is the open slot into which the belt is going to go when you go to put this back on again you may or may not see some dirty cotton type cork material probably cotton up here in this slot right here this slot and this slot has three holes drilled through it and this is oil retaining material and the oil this one here had a little cut back in it so when you put oil in here in the hole on top the big hole it will go down in here saturate this the whole oil will drip in and it will lubricate the main bearing up on or the main shaft I'm sorry up on top all right now, another thing you'll want to do at some point before you put this back in here is get yourself some emery paper okay, and smooth this out or rub, your, rub it around okay, okay, to get any burrs or any rough spots on here off. And you have to remember that this has been out of the machine before but not that often and consequently it, um, it could have some roughness on it. This one was chewed up before I ever went to take it out of here, so belts have been replaced in this machine before. So set your main, uh, main shaft uh, bushing aside, and now we're going to get into the putting the belt into the machine. Now let me double check my camera shot, make sure everything's still rolling along here. And it is. Okay, now I'm going to back up just a hair. We're going the wrong way. Okay. Okay. And show you this. Okay. And I'm going to be pushing up the machine. Well, I'll change the shot when I do that. So I've got ahead of myself here. So, right over there. We need to get a few things out of the way. And here comes the bell. Okay. Now. Go back over here and take a look at the shot. Okay, there is the belt. Okay, there are 46 cent sets, <laughs> 46 sets of alternating holes in this belt. All right, and what we're going to do is we're going to 
turn this one to show you that's how it will look when it's in the machine. It'll be on the lower shaft, the upper shaft, and it'll have one twist in it and they'll be rubbing up against one another as it goes around. Now, here we go. Put the, be the belt over the shaft and into the machine. Just like that. Okay? Remember it has to go over. There we go. Now, keep going and keep pushing on it. Now I'm going to go over here. And I can't keep looking at the camera uh, monitor, so I have to keep doing this thing. And I have to get something that I didn't take out, which is down below the machine. Or did I? Where is it? And I don't see my grab hook. Well, I know it's here. There it is. Okay. This is the hook I'm talking about that I made okay, out of a wire hanger. Alright. So, come around here to the back. And I still hit the camera and made it jump again. Okay. So here we go. Let's see if I can do this and have you see it while I'm doing it. Okay, I'm pushing on the belt. And I'm going to do it by, I'm going to have to do it by feel at first because I can't do both with the camera. All right, pushing up on it. Sometimes this goes easy and sometimes it does not. Okay, there it is right there. got it. There it is. Alright, I did it without the hook. Okay. And it got turned. So make sure you don't turn the belt and pull it through. There we go. Now, when you get it to that point, let me see if the camera shot is working for me here. Here we go. When you get that belt in there, and remembering that you put it over the top of the shaft, say you put it over the top of the shaft, and you got it in there, all right? Now, I'm going to back out a little bit too. Just a hair more. There we go. So my hands don't block up too much of this. Okay. All right. Now we're going to pull on this. Okay, and get it inside the machine. Now it is inside the machine and I am pushing it down. All right, but this is where the hook comes in. And I'm gonna have to reset this shot to show it to you. So let's go back over here and we're gonna go right into pause. Okay, I have reset the shot. Now, I'm going to use a flashlight. Okay, batteries are starting to go on it. And I'm looking in here, and I'm seeing the bell about three or four inches away, maybe even five inches away. And I'm going to reach in, I'm going to hook onto the bell, I'm going to pull it down, okay, and here it comes. And now it is in a, in a position where okay it could be put on here but the first thing I have to do is go back to the top of the machine 
and get it up onto the upper sprocket gear and get it away from here just like that get it down in here okay get it down in there okay and then move the machine back down okay because otherwise it's going to be too awkward and I'm going to go back into pause again and go to the back of the machine and that way you will see what it is you have to do so here we go for another pause okay now here comes the tricky part all right not necessarily for me but for you because you're a first timer and I'm experienced with this even if you have an oil pan um, attached to your machine um, if you can get around behind your machine like I am right now okay um, you can get your hand up in here and get it onto the belt which I have done right now I have it pinched between my two fingers okay next to the sprocket gear and this one up here there is the upper sprocket gear right there as plain as day looks just like the one on the bottom only it's just bigger all the way around so what you want to do is you want to move it over get it up onto here and just press some of the of them in here and maybe if you feel like it take your your hand wheel and push it up in there and roll it over okay roll it over until you see them really on there and you can feel it okay now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, without resetting the shot I'm going to go back and tip the machine up and see if I actually think let me see here let me, I'm talking to myself here for a minute yes okay I am looking through the machine and I am seeing that the belt see is approximately right on top of the sprocket gear it's not fully engaged but it's positioned right on top of it okay and that is what you would want to see if you did this inspection just like I'm doing it right now when you had a flashlight okay so I'm gonna pause the shot and I'm going to show you how to get it on to both sprocket gears with the twist as explained in the um, document that I sent you with the belt. So we're going into pause right now and then we'll be right back. Okay, we are back. So I have rocked the machine back onto its resting post. And here's a little piece of dust. And still there. Okay, here's the belt. Put your finger in there, gently pull it down so that you're engaging the upper sprocket gear. You'll feel the tension, okay? Now, get a hold of it just like this. Thumb and forefinger, got a cramp in my hand. Thumb and forefinger and pull it away and get it, hold the sprocket gear here. Get it away, get your finger in there, okay? and start to pull it onto these set screws will get in your way right onto the lower sprocket gear there it is right there you should be feeling some tension because the upper sprocket gear is holding on to the belt and there it is now I am getting up my hand onto the hand wheel up above. Okay, and I am pulling it toward me. And this is where you're going to have a small amount of fight. There, see, I got some more of it on there now. There we go. See that twist that I put on there? The twist is on there. Okay, and I am pulling this. Okay, and now I'm going to use a screwdriver to get up under here and get it started onto this first set of holes. Just like that. Come on, baby. Come on.
There we go. This material is very, very tough. Keep it pressed on there. And here we go. Okay. See, it wants to go on. Keep pressing. Don't have to be too terribly gentle. Can't tear. Okay, now that I've got it going backwards, okay, boom, it just popped on there. Okay, that will be probably where your heart will beat a little faster, okay? Because you're worrying, worrying that you're going to damage the belt, and you can't. Now remember that a sewing machine we, hand wheel moves towards you when it's sewing, okay? So here we go. All right, it's staying on there. That's the glue bond right there. Okay, and the sprocket points are coming through the belt. Let me turn it this way so you can see it turning. That, that makes it better. Okay, there we go. Just like that. It's a piece of grease that popped up. Okay, and even though I know it to be true, I'm going to close the machine now. I won't, I won't close it until I turn the camera off for the pause and show you the upper sprocket gear. So hang on, we're going back into pause. All right, so here's a good lesson in humility. I thought that the belt was on the sprocket gears okay because they were turning properly down below, but they're not. They're not on the upper, upper sprocket gear yet correctly. Now the hand wheel is still on here. Okay, you can see it where I can turn it, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put my fingers in here and I'm gonna move it, roll it forward and I'm gonna work it over. And now it just came on to the sprocket gear and some of the tension went away and now it's rolling properly. So when you go, now this is important, listen up. When you have got the belt turned, twisted, 180 degrees, and onto the lower sprocket gear, the shot before this one, and it was rolling fine and looking great, and you thought, well, maybe it's on the upper ones okay, it could not be. It might be, it might not be. So the next thing you do, come right around to the back of the machine and look at this, and you will see if you have to do what I did to get them onto the to the uh, the sprocket gear points right here. So now it's fully seated, okay, and we can start to put the machine back together again, okay. And that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the machine back together again. Um, and the part of it, well, I'm going to actually, I think I'll show you everything because that way you won't have anything left to doubt. So here's this little tiny screw to cover this inspection thing, this inspection hole. All right. There was guaranteed, there was a much bigger headed screw up here before this little guy came along. Come on, baby, go in the hole. There we go hands are greasy right now. Okay, there we go. And that's it right there. Okay. Actually, I put it on backwards. But I don't care. Okay, now we're going to go around to the end of the machine and I'm going to show you how to put it back together again. So hang on, we're going into pause. Okay, here we go. Now, nomenclature. Okay, main shaft, main shaft slots for hand wheel set screw. And this hole right here, excuse me, voice crack, this hole right here is threaded and it is going to receive the screw that holds the uh, oil delivery uh, part in there and this big hole right here is where you dump oil okay so we put in oil so 
So here we go. Here's the first little guy right here. Any cute? Okay, cute little part right there. Smartest little thing they probably ever did, although it really isn't necessary to be here. So it goes up on here like this, and it, the tip of it, okay, goes inside the machine. Okay, and this goes over here. Now, it's not going to position very well until it gets the screw. So, squeeze it together. Find the screw hole. And get it started with your fingertips. Okay, there we go. Now, squeeze it together and push it up. But, I'm going to make an addendum to that, okay? Loosen it back up a little bit. In other words, don't tighten it as much as I did, okay? And tip it... Tip it a little bit forward like that. So you can see the, see the edges, okay? Uh, or the edge of the back of the, uh, the main sh um, the case, okay? The sewing machine case, all right? And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to make sure that you get the bushing back in all the way. Because the bushing, and here it comes, okay, the bushing has to, the face of the bushing right in here, okay, okay, has to meet that and, and touch it, okay. This is the slot where the set screw on the side is going to go engage. And here is the top of the of the, the bushing that has the three holes in it, and I'm just going to reuse the, the cork material that was in there. Okay, I'm not going to sew much with this machine, so it could be replaced. And since, if you're going to use um, your machine a lot, which I hope you do, um, if you have some cord, cotton cord that you use when you tie up turkeys and and chickens and whatnot, you can use a piece of that because it's 100% real cotton. Cut a little piece of it and lay it in here. Make sure it's down below the surface, you know, of the rise and the cut. Okay, and fill it up and tap it down. And now here we go. We have to put this in exactly how it was when it came out. And we're going to put this in here like this. Okay. And now that it's on there, okay, we can tap it in. And I have a wooden block that will allow me to tap this in. And it's probably going to cover, well, we'll cover up some of the shot. Okay, we're far enough back. Start tapping it in. But this has been in and out a couple of times already. And once it gets to this point, you're going to have to stay on the edges because here comes the main shaft, the end of it. So stay on the edges, okay, and tap around the top, okay, maybe go this way, okay, and tap around the top and the bottom, okay, okay, now check to see, very important, check to see that the slot with the cotton in it is right up underneath that hole, and if you have to, which in this case, I have to. Okay. okay. I'm going to have to twist this ever so little, because I didn't get it completely perfect. Right up there like that. And I want it to go right straight in there, underneath. Okay? So. Okay. Okay, and the reason we're leaving this loose is so we can see it. Okay, because when it hits it, it's going to stop. Okay, and it just stopped. Okay, very different sound, it stopped. And that's why I left this screw on the uh, oil pond, uh, the oil sliding pond uh, down. Alright, now, 
Now that we're here, okay, we can go ahead and squeeze this up and line it up because it will not be in the way of the hand wheel regardless. The hand wheel is going to stop right there. So, all right, so tighten up your little sliding pond, okay? Now everything's tight here. Next thing on is the hand wheel. Now remember, okay, don't do this, don't make this mistake, okay? The set screws are on the out, and here's the pulley for the motor, you know, the motor pulley, uh, and, and the belt that comes up. So this, this, a whole, all of this, which was filthy when I took it off earlier to, to set up the, uh, the video, so I cleaned all of this, okay? And we're going to approximate right now where these two slots are and where these two set screws are. And we are going to wiggle it on there. And remember, we loosened these. We didn't take them out, okay? Boom, there she goes. She's all the way in. And right now, right now she's all the way in and this there's a recess right in here where the main shaft ends and this comes out so let's just start to tighten these down okay but not all the way not yet not all the way and not yet okay now they're tightened and go back and find your big screw Okay, this big screw right here that goes in the end of the main shaft. And remember I told you that we're not going to tighten this real hard, okay? We are just going to spin it in, okay, until it touches, okay? Right now there is no hard um, resistance by turning this, okay? Give it a half a turn. If it's still loose enough, fine. If you turn it more, it's still okay. If you turn it more, it's still okay. If you turn it that much, it's still okay. Okay. If you turn it that much, it's still okay. It's still okay. Okay. Okay, when you can't... See, now it's getting too tight. So just back up a hair. Okay. Like that. Okay. There you go. Now your machine is ready to be completely reassembled. And I'm going to do one more thing that I didn't do at the beginning of the video, which I forgot to do, was show you about the, um, the belt guide. So, um, without going into pause, I'm going to, well, I will go into pause. Never mind that. I'll be right back. Okay, here we go with the uh, lower belt guide. Now, before I show you that, um, let me point out the places where if you had taken off your belt guide to get it out of your way. But here are, or if it was missing, which is going to be more common than not. But these, this screw right here, or screw hole right here, this one, and this one down here, Okay, are the two holes that will receive the belt guide screws. And just for your satisfaction purposes, looking at the belt as it's coming around the lower belt guide, you can see that this that it's fully seated on the gear and the sprocket pins are protruding through. And they, this is thanks to the man who helped me design the jig to make the belts because he, and the last time I saw him, he uh, helped me make the hole cleaner and slightly larger so it would seat better on here before they were raised up a little bit and they were getting a little torn as they went around. And also, um, formally in the other videos, the older videos that I'm going to be deleting after this one gets up, um, these two screws here had to come loose, all of this had to come loose, and now we don't have to do that anymore. So I'm very happy about that. 
So here we go. Here's the lower belt guide, okay? And this part may be missing and you don't need it, but since this machine had it on there, okay, we had to get it out of the way so we could work with this. So you can see that this is offset, okay? And these are offset from one another, so that's why it was done that way. So the belt guide goes in, and I always do this backwards the first time. The belt guide goes in so that this curve rides right up against there, doesn't touch it, okay? But it's right there to help if the belt would ever flop this help pop it right back on again but this belt will not stretch and it will not pop off so here we go all right there is one screw in a hole just like that okay and then here is the other one. This tool has to get out of the way. And so does this one. Both of them fell on the floor. Okay, this one goes here. Come on, baby. Drive me crazy. Oh. God, this makes me nuts. Come on, go in. God almighty. Gonna have to do this with the light off. Oh. What a bear. Finally. Mm. Okay. And actually, um, kind of attests to the precision that Singer made their sewing machines because there isn't any kind of room for error or sloppiness in a Singer sewing machine. They were beautifully made. So now you can see that the belt guide's in place, okay? It's between the two sets of sprocket holes. The gear, see this is turning, it's not touching. And there it is. So that's how this looks when it is properly back together again, if you have the belt guide. Don't feel bad about not having a belt guide and try, do yourself a favor and don't try to find one because they don't exist anymore. Okay, so let's get the tools up off the floor, and now we're going to go into retiming the sewing machine. Big pause. All right, here we go. I hope I don't have to reset the shot uh, to do this, and so please watch, pay attention, and hopefully this will go real fast. Now, here's the needle that I put in right here. This is a brand new number 18 needle. And I didn't want to have to fumble with it, but I want to show you, since I already have it in, I wanted to show you how I put needles back in industrial sewing machines. I have another needle in my hand right here. So I'm putting it into the eye of the needle. The scarf of the needle, the cutout, okay, is, is right above the eye. It's right there, and I have it in here. And here is, okay, the set screw that tightens everything. It's up above, okay? And let me bring it down and show it to you if I can. If it'll come into the shot. There is the shot right there. I'm just trying not to have the hook hit the needle yet because it's not in time. So when you have the needle needle point of another needle in the eye of the needle you're installing, okay, aim it. Turn it, push it upward and aim it and then give give this screw a nice good turn and it's already done and make sure that everything is nice and stable in there. The most important thing of all is to make sure that the needle is all the way up and 
equally important really is to have the scarf pointing over toward the support arm uh, the support under the arm of the machine alright now let's back this out of here and I'm turning it and you can see the three screws there is one screw okay that is an approximation to the needle eye it's right there and this is almost actually in time but see this last one that came around as the as the eye as the um, hook point went past okay that's the one that we're gonna um, we're gonna loosen all three of them but that's the one we're gonna tighten first okay so here we go and I have a hollow ground screwdriver here with a really good blade on it which will allow me to not tear up these screws. All this metal is unfortunately very soft. So let's loosen this just a hair. A little bit more like that and the hook will turn with my fingers. Okay. Coming around to the next one. Okay. See how the needle jammed up in the hook right there when I did that? So I already know which way I'm going to push the hook based upon what I was seeing when it went around. And I just loosened this one again, okay? And this one, as I'm turning it backwards, okay, is the third screw. I'm going to loosen that one there. Now the hook is loose. I just saw it shimmer. Okay. Hang on, baby. All right. Okay, and let me get up under here and see if I can turn it without the shaft moving. Okay, I'm going to have to loosen this up just a bit more to really get it loose. Okay, there's one and two. Like that. And three, okay, and here's a little trick to use when trying to move the hook on the, on the shaft. Just use your screwdriver to get in there next to one of the screws, turn the shaft against it, and hopefully the hook will loosen up, will be loose enough so that you can move it. Still not loose enough. Still not loose enough. Although I don't feel any tension on here. Just that's too, that's loose enough. You don't want these screws to come off the collar, or I mean, and get and drop down, because then you got another hassle trying to get them back into place. All right, now I'm reaching under here and I'm holding on to the hook and I'm trying to move it and it does not want to move yet. get Mr. Hammer into this. Mm. Mm. The wheel is still turning. Oh, wait a minute, I think it just slipped. Just slipped on me. Nope. Won't loosen up. 
take a pause and I'm going to loosen that one. I'm going to be using chemicals to loosen this up. So hang on. Okay. Now, I think I kind of got lucky because I was using the, a screwdriver to hold the hook in place while I turned the hand wheel and it slid on me, but it wasn't really loose. However, when I stopped and checked to see where I was, all of a sudden the machine was in time. So let me point out to you how you know when your machine is probably in time. All right, and probably means that you haven't checked it yet with thread. So here we go. I'm turning the hand wheel toward me, okay? And the needle goes up and comes down to its lowest point. And as it does it, it enters the it enters the the hook, which is stationary right below what's turning. And as it comes back up, the hook point, which is right there, and I showed it to you earlier. There's the hook point right there. Comes up, and as the needle is coming upwards, it passes through the scarf. And the needle keeps going, and the hook keeps going, and they do not touch each other, okay? This is called a rotary hook, and here comes the hook point right through the needle. And you notice that they're not touching. I'm doing it faster, see? Okay, and also notice that the needle goes down, the hook goes through, the hook goes all the way around again. There's the hook point. Okay, so it goes around twice, and then the needle comes back down again, enters the bobbin case to pick up the thread, and around it goes. Now, I am satisfied in the way that this looks, and I'm going to tighten up all three screws. And the one that I told you about to keep loose, I have already tightened. Okay, I have tightened that screw right there. Oh, excuse me. This screw right there. So now I'm going to make sure that all three of them are tight. Okay. Okay. All right. This one is tight again. And this is a, a gun cleaning screw driving set with hollow, hollow ground screwdriver bits that fit into these screws very well and will not ruin them. They will not, if they, they can't really slip out easily. And the screws that are in here, I guarantee you, have been replaced once because these guys look brand new. And this machine is from 19, when did I say, 27, 29? See how it, okay, so there we go, all three, three screws are tight, okay, now what I'm going to do, machine's plugged in, I am going to test this at speed, so let's get this cleared out of the way, you didn't have to remove this, see it was slid up it over all the time and I'm bringing up the belt to put on the machine it's awkward because the tripod's right in my way okay I have the belt back on the motor the belt is on here I'm going to work my foot around the tripod leg, and here we go. There it goes. That, okay. This is what you want to see when you got your machine almost completely, perfectly, whatever applies, in time. Okay? Now you're seeing that the feed dog a holder moving, hooks running around, and needles going up and down, and voila. So I'm not going to waste time um, 
putting the machine back together again in here. I'm going to put the parts back on it. I'm going to thread it. Um, when I get around to threading it, I'll show you how to thread it um, properly. Um, and then we'll test it with some material and see how she is sewing and if she's picking up the bobbin thread. So hang on. All right. All right, through the magic of television, we have gotten the machine timed as you saw it. Now, I want to show you a couple of things here about putting in bobbins, okay, which is important. Uh, bobbins can go in either way. In other words, when you, when you put it in and you run it up through this slot right there and then take it around under the spring and hook it out like that, it can either, when you're pulling on it, it can either run counterclockwise or clockwise. And what you want it to do is to run clockwise like this. Okay. Just like that. That way you're getting tension. If you have it going the other way, you don't have as much tension on here. And it can whiplash inside the bobbin. Okay. So there you go. All right. Now I'm going to get a hole in my scissors, okay, cut off the excess, leave about four or five inches hanging loose like that and get up around under here and remember that this opening on the bobbin or on the, on the bobbin case, this opening on the bobbin case is on top and the spring flipper is facing you. So reach around under there, okay, or tilt the machine back if you're not so sure about it, and get it up on into the bobbin case, okay, like that. Wiggle it around until you got that thing up on top, and press it with your finger and listen for the click. There was the click, okay. Now, bobbin thread is hanging loose. Get a hold of, put, put your, and take your sewing foot up. Get a hold of your thread that's through the needle coming down, okay, through the thread cutter, which also serves as a, as a guide. Look for it. Get it around to the front, through the needle and down. So here we go. I'm just rolling over the needle. Holding on to the thread, down she goes, and up she goes. And on a, on a sewing hook like this one, it ought to catch it on the first try. And there it is, it got caught, all right? So I have white thread in the bobbin and brown, brownish reddish thread up on top. So here they are, okay, came up through the hole, laid them to the back, all right? This is about a one inch thick piece of upholstery leather. Very heavy duty stuff. Okay, and it has a reddish grain to it. Okay, and there you can tell there's the flesh side of it. Okay. Underneath the foot, put it down, drop that. I have a knee lifter on here too, which I, I'm operating with my hand right now. Okay. Now I'm operating it with my leg. Okay and set your needle okay also uh, and then make sure that you do not have your your side of your leg your calf or your knee on your knee lifter when you're sewing otherwise you will skip missed stitches and maybe break your needle so now the needle is down in the works and the goods okay and all i have to do is start sewing okay that clicking sound that you hear, okay, especially on a worn in um, Singer 95 one is the needle positioner and it is it is stationary and the hook is moving, it's vibrating and it's it's hitting the, the two metal pieces are hitting each other and it's clicking. Now this is laying down perfect stitches, okay. Now if you're if you're knee lifter is correctly set when you press if you have put this up on the back with your hand okay 
and your foot is up, when you press on your knee lifter, it will release it, and you, did you hear it fall, okay? Let me do it one more time, listen. It fell, and then you drop that, okay? And this machine is so loose, all I gotta do is just press on the pedal a little bit. I don't even have to start the hand wheel. And there she goes. All right, now let's take a look at the back of this work. Okay, let me spin it around. Okay, and there are the white threads. Can you see them? And you can barely see them. All right, let's do this. Quick pause. All right, we're back. I want you got a piece of black um, oil tan uh, leather, just like the red stuff. Okay, you heard that click again when I released the uh, the foot down with the knee lifter. So here we go. We're going to sew onto it. Oh, I didn't catch. Okay, there we go. All right. Just missed the edge. Okay. There we go. Coming around the bend. Okay. I have a servo motor on this machine, and that is why underneath, and that is why I can so slow. Oops. See, the foot wasn't down. Right. Okay, there we go. Okay, now, let's see what we got here. There we go. Gives you an idea. She is set perfectly. Okay. Um, any sewing machine manual will tell you about upper and lower thread tensions. Okay. So this one right now is sewing equally on, on the top and the bottom on this black material. And you, I think you can very easily see this red thread on this smooth surfaced uh, oil tan le uh, uh, leather. This gives you an idea about how you can use this machine as a crafter's machine. It will sew even thicker than, than, than it is right now. Um, just to show you, okay, and I know she's going to do it for me, okay, is that I am going to sew this piece to the black one, okay? Same idea. If you can get it under the foot, you ought to be able to sew it. Okay? You might have to start it. But the punching power on this machine is such... There she goes. That she is sewing these two. This is about her limit. Okay? It's about her limit for thickness. Okay? So let's loosen this up. Okay, and there it is. Right there, the sew that's the sewing line. This is the sewing line for sewing this to this. So that is about it, okay? If you have questions, feel free to call me. Um, area code 919-889-7894. I will put that on the end title on this machine. This is Bob's Leather Works, and again, I'm the only person in the whole world that makes the, re the uh, replacement timing belt for this machine. So, there you go. Any, and also, any of you that have a rotary hook in your, uh, your sewing machine where the, the hook goes around as you look at it on a counter -clock, in a counterclockwise uh, direction, that's how you time a rotary hook. Okay. And let me swing up here also to here. Okay, let me get this in here. Okay. Let me get up here. All right. This is called the unwinder. Okay. On a sewing machine. So right now, let me loosen this up a little bit so I can swing it around. I'm just using a, a rewound spool of 69 reddish brown thread. This is bonded nylon thread. It is coming back down to the unwinder. Okay. It goes down, down first, back up, around, back around and through, and down to the upper tension assembly. Okay. 
this spring right here, okay, should be sitting right where this one is, okay? Right about at the, um, oh, 10, 11 o'clock position. And what I'm gonna do, okay, well, let me let me do one more thing before I take it out. So, we're coming down through, through the unwinder, and we're behind, okay, this piece right here, this guide, into the two tension discs, okay, okay, and if you notice, they're moving, okay, when you lift this one up, okay, they don't move as much, but when you use the knee lifter like I'm doing now, there's a pin in there that's pushing this on this spring in here, okay, and that is opening up the discs, allowing the thread to be pulled. Then it comes back around, and let's take it out to show you, okay, all right, through the discs, okay, comes around, see, around through the discs, okay, over, back into the, to the hook of the spring, into the hook of the spring, down, see the spring action, okay, this is called a slack tension spring, okay, right there, goes around this piece here, comes back through this guide, okay, up to the take up, up to the take up lever, okay, right through here, okay, right, right through the take up lever, right there, back down, okay, and on this machine, they're in the front, kind of hard to see, uh, from that angle, but there's one hook up here, and you push it forward to catch it. Spin this one around on the lower one, okay. Then bring it down, okay, to where the thread cutter is, and hook it into the thread cutter. There's the thread cutter right there. There's the lower spring, and you can't really see the upper spring. It's hidden a little bit from this camera angle. Okay, and then you have no more guides except to put it right through the eye of the needle. And 18 needles and 69 thread are, are, all, are all, pur all purpose thread are a match. Okay. And for some reason she's balking on the end here. Mm. Let's snip it again and try it one more time. There it goes, it went through. Oh, that was out of the shot was out. I was doing it and you couldn't see. Okay, so there's the thread coming through the needle. Oh, it came out again while I did that. So now you're gonna see me do it one more time. Come on, baby, there she goes. All right, there it is, right there. Pull it through that. Turn the hand wheel, oh, she's ar and she's already threaded, so there it is, it's already out. So there you go, that is the end of the lesson for all of you. And this video is gonna run long, but hopefully you will watch it all and you will learn and for sewing machine, uh, sewing machine repair services, this is where you get, um, I'm the guy that you get the belt from. And uh, hopefully if you don't have, if you've bought a belt for your machine or your grandma's machine, then, and you feel mechanically challenged, this will help a sewing machine operator uh, or repair, repair service um, know what to do about putting it in. Some guys, um, I'm gonna, and I wanna thank um, Perfect Timing Sewing Machine there in Providence, Rhode Island, and I wanna thank uh, Spirito, uh, hopefully I'm saying it right, Spirit, um, Spirito or Spirito in New Jersey, and he's very experienced on these machines, and he knows how to put the belt in. And they helped me um, 
with something very significant I won't go into about the design on the belt and now they go in a lot easier than they did before so there you go you can sew a quarter of an inch of very heavy upholstery leather with this machine and she's a beaut okay there you go all right happy sewing and bye bye from crystal river florida take care